So explain the difference between lidocaine and Botox in that so situation. So lidocaine literally blocks the nerve, okay? It works directly on the nerve to prevent any signals from, from going uh, through that nerve or back to the brain. Uh, Botox, um, we know Botox has some effects on the actual nerve itself, but the majority of the effects of Botox are on the muscles surrounding the nerve. So by using a blocking, a nerve blocker like the lidocaine or, or, or a marking, we're actually preventing any signal from that irritation further out mm -hmm. to get back to the brain to cause the, the pain. Okay? So even if it's still compressed by muscles, it's the, the, it's the nerve the can't, can't relay those distress right. signals back to the brain. Um, Botox works by relaxing those muscles that are causing the compression. And so um, ideally, let's talk about the nerves um, in the brow. So you have the supraorbital and supratrochlear nerves. Um, and this is when people get aesthetic Botox. What we're doing is putting Botox in what's called the corrugator muscle, which causes the wrinkles and the glabella, um, the, the elevens that people say when they're frowning. Um, and these nerves go through that muscle. So Botox often will prevent headaches in patients who have um, these muscles causing this compression, which is causing the migraines. So um, some people, instead of doing this with lidocaine, will give Botox and then assess over a period of time. Because as we know, Botox only, it takes about four or five days to take effect. Um, the, the issue that I found with Botox is because you are adding volume to the muscle, which is already compressing the nerve, mm -hmm. things get worse before they get better. That's Not always, but Really sometimes. interesting because people sometimes, especially people who haven't had Botox before, will complain of headaches after their first Botox injection. Because that volume that you're putting in there is causing more irritation. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's tough for the patient because I came to the surgeon to get better. No, and he worse. made me worse, right? And so, you know, for the first week, it was a lot of phone calls, mm -hmm. right? Um, but a lot of those patients, after that period of time, will then find that their headaches are improved because as the Botox takes effect, there's less compression, less irritation, less of that distress signal going back. Um, however, Botox, again, works on muscle, but it doesn't work on... Um, blood vessels or bones or fascia, which is connect, you know connective tissue, and a lot of times there are these other non-muscular things that are causing the compression. Mm -hmm. So if Botox doesn't work, it doesn't necessarily mean the surgery won't work. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. But if the lidocaine, if the lidocaine right. doesn't work, that's a better prognostic thing in my world that, okay, even if we block the nerve, right. the that headache's not change. getting worse, right? Yeah. And I can tell you that I've seen that twice, mm -hmm. right? I mean, almost everybody that gets to me is improved by these blocks, which is remarkable, because I'm, granted, I'm, I'm, a, I'm seeing a very small subset. Mm -hmm. But if almost everybody that I'm seeing is responding to this, you know, you got to wonder how many people are out there that are potential responders, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so you, you have peripheral nerves, and those nerves get compressed, and that's what we think is going on. There are certain areas of the head that uh, we see this over and over with migraine sufferers. Most of the time it's muscle, but it can be other things, like you're talking about fascia or um, where the nerves come out of the bone, the bone itself. Just different types of differing anatomy can affect that. Uh, they come in, you use the lidocaine to numb the nerve, and if they get resolution of symptoms or an improvement, then you have a good idea that something around this nerve is irritating it. If I can go in there and release it and give it some freedom, it won't be so angry and send back painful stimuli to the brain, which then relates to this chronic problem called migraines. Yeah, I guess we're done. Okay. We just yeah, did the whole thing. Yeah. Exactly.